Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 Minute Moan. Uh, this one's not a moan, this topic's something I just want to share with you, get feedback from you. And it's the um, decision for me to stand uh, as a candidate for Hollywood. Now, where I'm at with this, i um, been asked by a lot of people to stand. I was asked by the first people who asked me to stand or consider standing was one of the, the main parties approached me and just one of the people from that party I suggested if I wanted to stand as a candidate for them, it could happen. But I didn't really align with that party, so that didn't happen. And, and since then, I've been asked by four, yeah, four smaller parties, some newer parties, to stand. And when I started considering this, I even considered going and maybe talking to the forum about maybe standing as a candidate for them. But what happened with them over the last uh, sort of 48, 72 hours when a lot of things came to light about their Scottish part of their party put me off them, to be perfectly honest with you. And I do hope reform can recover in Scotland from what happened where they've actually, four nationalists that I know, known to be nationalists, known to want Scottish independence, were put forward as candidates for them. Um, and that doesn't sit well with me. I don't know. But I think a lot of people like myself who are unionists have been searching for a party to call home. And a lot had seen reform as that. Uh, but right now, reform isn't that to me because any unionist party that puts up candidates and a number of candidates, and there might be more, I've not done a check on every one of them. I've just had information of about four of them given to me. Any unionist party that puts up a candidate who wants Scottish independence and are actually driving for another referendum isn't a unionist party. So they're off the card for me just now. And I hope they can repair the, the damage that's been done because there's good people in the forum. I'm not a uh, you know, I'm a, I quite like Nigel Farage. I, do, I know some of the candidates uh, in Scotland who are good people and not nationalists. And I hope they can fix their issues just now, but I couldn't lend myself to them or my vote as it stands right now. So, and what happened with, the, with them also sort of put me off party politics a bit as well, to be honest with you. So, there was one other party, the SDP, that I've got a great manifesto and I was considering standing for them. But no, through no fault of their own, just what happened with the uh, um, reform thing, just lost me my faith in political parties. So if I'm going to do this thing, um, I will stand as an independent, unless something drastic was to happen between now and the, the Hollywood elections, which could be two years away. But my plan, what I'm, as it stands just now, and you know, I'm flexible, um, is that I would stand as a regional list candidate. Uh, in Glasgow, and if Hamza Yousaf stands in his own seat, he's my MP, I would stand against him as a constituency vote, but ask people not to vote for me because I would be encouraging people to tactically vote to try and remove him or whoever the SNP put in his place. But I don't think I'd stand as a constituency candidate unless Hamza was there, I think that'd be good fun to be perfectly honest with you, and just annoy him, right? And tell folk not to vote for him, don't vote for me, but vote for that guy, whoever the best place to beat them, um, but then ask people to lend me their vote on the regional list. Now to do that, I probably need about 20,000 people in Glasgow to vote for me across the nine constituencies, so it's no easy task. Um, and right now I'm not sure if I could or couldn't do it, um, but what I'm going to do is I will stand if I think I could get elected. I don't see the point in standing if I don't, because I'm just taking votes off somebody else that could you know, do a better job. So if I think and I get the you know the the, the, the groundswell of, um, opinion that this could be doable, then I'll do it. If I don't think I could get the the number of um, votes needed, I would not do it and suggest who we should vote for to try and um, get as many non SNP seats as possible. So that that's where I'm at. And what would I, I stand for? And I've got a couple of mad ideas, right? And I don't even know if they're doable or legal, right? But I've got some mad ideas. Basically, what I had want, want in Holyrood is to put a normal person there. And I would love to see 130 normal people in Holyrood, no career politicians, no folk that are there for their own ego and to see it as a, a I don't know, a, a, way of, you know a, a, a way of giving themselves a considerable amount of money um, for a long time. That is not the driver for me. The driver for me is putting, whether it's me or other people, I hope as many as possible consider doing what I'm doing, but putting normal people in there. And I'm not even caring what parties they're in. 
because I hate party politics. I really detest the notion of it. So if I get into Hollywood, what would I do? Well, I would be the guy that would be like, you know, the um, stewards, right, who don't really get involved, but watch everybody else and be the steward for Scotland, right? And from the inside, try and get rid of the co corruption. Try and get people to answer questions. That would be quite nice, you know? First Minister's question, the presiding officer would take me. If he's a big red button for point of order, I'd be pressing that all the time. Excuse me, presiding officer, that man there, ask the First Minister, had a lovely question. I'd like to know the answer. He's asked him twice now, and he's still going to answer the question. Could you ask the First Minister, please, if you wouldn't mind, go and answer that question, because I think the Scottish people would like a proper answer. No blame in Westminster. Thank you. Right, see you on that. Would, right, just would be a pest to them, right? And one of the biggest things I'd like to do, see running a country, it's very much like running a business. You've got an income line and you've got an outgoings line. And in the business world, you try and make the difference as big as possible between the two. So you've got a thing called profit. When you run a country, you just want them to be the same, right? So you bring all this money in in taxes and you spend it in services. That's simply how government should work, especially when you're in one that's not going to worry about like foreign affairs and all that nonsense, right? So there's your country, there's your bag of rules, and there's the money you're getting, right? But what governments tend to do is, so they've got more money to spend in services, they think they need more of an income, so what we'll do is we'll look at how can we tax folk. Now, that's not always obvious, like your wages, right? It could be a wee bit uh, more um, clandestine things like taxing you in a can of coke, right? So... But if you need more of this, we, we just make the taxes better, whether that's, you know, low emissions and all this nonsense that they just blind taxes, as I call them. But I think we look at it the wrong way. I think we should look at what we're spending first and make sure we're getting value for money. Now, if you've got 80 people doing a daft management job, and I'm not, by the way, see domestic staff, nurses and all that in hospitals, they're safe, right? They're, 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 they're angels, right? These people are worth their weight in gold. Right? I know many of them. They do a cracking job, and I can't even thank them enough. But the problem is, if you look at the health service, it might be what's happening further up the chain, where you've got too many people getting stupid wages and doing nothing, and not accountable, right? Or the contracts that these people sign off, where we're not getting value for money. Now, I like reckon things like, see the free buses for the 21s or whatever, that nobody really uses, they just abuse them, and they end up having gang fights and priest as opposed to keeping them in Easter, who see all that sort of stuff, right? Look at that and think, do we get value of money getting these kids? How many actually use it and would they the benefit in it, right? If the answer's none, woof, we're not doing that anymore, right? So there's £300 million right away, saved, off the bottom line. So we don't need to tax anybody. We've saved £300 million, £300 million of taking something out, right? We've got that money instantly that we can put into stuff that needs the money. Like health, like roads, like education, like transport, like um, homes, etc. right? So all these stuff that's crying out for more money. Save money somewhere that's of no benefit to anybody and whack it in there, right? Easy. And what I'd love to do is set up a committee and look around the room and go, do you know what, there's about six good folk here. Let's all get in a room and let's, we've got five years of this, let's get under the bonnet and see how much wastage we've got. How much stuff are we spending money on that we don't need to spend money on? And see the stuff that we are spending money on. Are we getting best value for it? Because see if we're not, right? We'll end up with a big pot of money. Now, if we can save £300 million a year off the buses, the bus passes, right? We could then probably save billions once we looked at all the stuff that the government spends money on. And it's dead easy. You get somebody to get a spreadsheet, right? With the biggest things here and, the, the, you know, the amounts of money that we spend on and the least down here. Start for here, right? See the big fucking the price tag things. Look at that. Because they're the ones you'll, if you can save 10% off them all, these are the ones that you'll make the biggest effort at. So that's something I'd be keen to do. So, so far, I'm being the sort of steward for the Scottish nation, right? Making sure these buggers do their job right. And two, looking at the, the costs and making sure Scott, the Scottish people's money is best spent without having to... So we can give people better services without give, taking more money off them. Just spend the money better. That's number two. Number three, I want to make people have an input into government. Now, I don't even know if this is legal or doable, right? But if I got voted in on the last seat in Glasgow, for example, right? I want to not only serve, and I mean that, that word serve, because that's what MSPs do. They are our servants, no the other way about, right? And if I was the MSP for this area, I would take that on board 
In fact, I'd write it in my car, on my sun visor. So every day I went to my work, I see and remind myself, you are serving the people, right? But I'm not only just serving the people that would be vote, have voted for me. And I wouldn't only be vote, um, serving the people in that constituency, although that's my legal obligation. I'm serving the people of Scotland, every single last one of them, right? And there's things that I, that would be dead obvious, because I'd make a list of the stuff. This is why you'd be voting for me. This is all the stuff I want to do, right? This is stuff I want to affect, right? You see stuff that's not on that list, I might still need to vote on that. And if I don't really, if I've not told the Scottish people, vote for me, here's what you're voting for, and something comes along that's not on that list, I don't want to vote in a way that they don't want me to. So do you know what I was looking at doing? And I don't know if it's possible or even legal. Set up some website somewhere that people in Scotland, not just even my constituents, right? The people of Scotland can register on it and see any time something comes up that I have to vote on that's known my list of stuff I've told you this is what I'm wanting, right? That which you, you happily voted for, right? See if it was something off that list. Like let's say the XL Bully Dugs thing came up, right? That would never have been in anybody's list or manifesto because it's just one of these bizarre things that come up from time to time. I would just open that up on a vote within a sort of website somewhere if it's doable and say, right, how do you want me to vote? Then the Scottish people have not only got an input into politics once every five years, they would have an input in politics every single time a vote came up that the guy they voted for hasn't already told them how he's voting, right? Because let's say it was some of the stuff on that list, I don't need to ask you because that's what you voted for, right? But see all the other stuff that comes along from time to time. Like, like on my manifesto type thing, it would be, a woman is an adult female, right? End of story. So see it and that affects that. You know how I'm voting because I've told you before again, right? So I don't need to ask you how do you want me to vote because I've already told you how I'm going to vote and things like that. So I don't need to put that out to a poll because a woman is an adult female, right? So anything like that, any gender stuff, anything that would affect that. And other things I'd put on is like what we teach our kids at school, right? So anything came up in Parliament regarding that, you don't, I don't, you don't need to ask me how I'm voting. I've already told you. So that sort of stuff when you go to a poll. But see anything out with it that I've already told you, I would ask you guys, what do you want me to do? On each and every single aspect of anything that I was had not told you before I got voted on, what I was going, how I was going to vote, right? So you could actually have an input. I don't know, once a month, once a week. I don't know how often these things get voted on that wouldn't be on the list of stuff I've, I've told you before I went in, right? So that's what I would stand for. And do you know what else I'd like to say? See anybody else that goes, that's not a bad idea. And you live in Paisley, or you live in Dundee, excuse me, or you live in Stornoway. Consider doing the same as I'm doing. Because I would love a Scottish Parliament with zero, I'm not saying zero politicians, because there's some politicians I quite like, right? I'll take a cracker. Total off, half years old, like, what? Do you know who I'd love to see in Scottish Parliament? Folk like Neil Hanvey, right? A nationalist. A guy who's been an SNP MP. A guy who's now an ALBA uh, member. See, guys, like, he's a great guy. The only one thing that I don't agree with with Neil Hanvey is independence. But see all the rest of it. He knows what a woman is. He knows the dangers of people teaching kids about how to be trans when they're not really and stuff like that, right? He gets all that stuff, right? So, see somebody like that, a room full of them, right? A room full of politicians that aren't um, self-serving, right? Because there's loads of them, get them parked. See normal people, people like me that have never really had, up until recently, I was even that bothered about politics, other than the big, big, you know, the big ticket things like independence. Isn't he bothered about them? Normal people, their life's experiences, and they know right for wrong, they understand common sense and logic. Let's get Hunters up for election. Right? Oh, you're Scotland. We've got two years to sort this shit out. No, you might not have the resources or the, the reach to be able to consider doing it as an individual. Like I'm considering doing it. That's probably where I'm going to end up, by the way. But look at the parties. Look at the SDP, for example. Great party. Absolutely fantastic. If I hadn't been open my eyes with the, the reform carry-on and I've now sort of just disappeared. I don't want the notion of having... Um, me serving my party, it doesn't suit me anymore. So see everybody else. Look at these things. Maybe join them. Maybe stand up. See if you're a normal punter. Right? Stand up for election. There you go. So if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please subscribe. Give me your feedback in the comments below because I need your feedback. But most importantly of all, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.